Welcome to the Side Hustle to Small Business podcast powered by Hiscox. I'm your host, Sanjay Parekh. Throughout my career, I've had side hustles, some of which have turned into real businesses. But first and foremost, I'm a serial technology entrepreneur. In the creator space, we hear plenty of advice on how to hustle harder and why you can sleep when you're dead. On this show, we ask new questions in hopes of getting new answers. Questions like, how can small businesses work smarter? How do you achieve balance between work and family? How can we redefine success in our businesses so that we don't burn out after year three? Every week, I sit down with business founders at various stages of their side hustle to small business journey. These entrepreneurs are pushing the envelope while keeping their values. Keep listening for conversation, context, and camaraderie. Bonnie Malden's career evolved from healthcare to training to marketing to now founding two different companies. She started the Malden Group, a marketing firm based in Atlanta, Georgia in 2015. And in 2022, Bonnie added to her repertoire when she founded the Malden Production Company. Here today to share more about her business story and what she's learned along the way is Bonnie Malden. Bonnie, welcome to the show. Hello. Well, I'm excited to have you here because um, I think you've got, the, especially the second company is interesting um, given that we're here in Atlanta. But before we get there, tell us a little bit about your background and how you got to where you are now. Sure. Uh, when I was a kid, I always wanted to be a doctor. And I went to school, taking up pre-med uh, in clinical laboratory science. I got a full ride academic scholarship through uh, an international science fair that I was in in high school. And um, I was on that track to be a doctor. And uh when I got a chance to actually work in the hospital, uh, a few traumatic things happened in the hospital that made me want to change career paths. One, I watched a woman lose twins and I had to take the babies to the morgue. And two, this obese woman had uh, her leg cut off because of diabetes. And then I had to watch the, the I had to clean the leg, prop the leg up, watch the leg get cut off wrap the leg up and then take it to the morgue. And then at that point I said, you know what? <laughs> hmm, maybe this isn't for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not cut out for this. This does this doesn't appeal to any of my creativity. I like to yeah. write. I like music. I like poetry. I like books. I like creativity and, and making things. And this has nothing to do with making things. This has to do with taking care of sick, sick people and yeah. um, even though I love helping people, I just need something that's going to appeal to that creative side of myself. Right. So um, resigned from the hospital, started working um, in my own biz back when Google and Facebook were brand new. I was an early adopter, used the platforms to grow my wellness coaching business, just loved the idea of marketing. And then I uh, said, you know what? I love doing this so much. I, I can do this for other people. I, I can just do this all day long. I just love it. And so Malden Group was born and here we are. Awesome. So it was this your first time? First of all, um, it's awesome that you got that experience early and realized like, this is not for me. You, you gave me the shivers while talking about that because medical stuff I've known from a young age, that is not for me. Mm. Um, and so I didn't even need that experience, uh, to know that I shouldn't go that way, but was this your first time ever doing something entrepreneurial or did you do something entrepreneurial when you were younger? Like when you were a kid, like any kind of hustling stuff back then? Yeah. Uh, it's funny. You said hustling stuff. Like when I was a kid, eight years old, I was the only eight year old little girl out shoveling snow like knocking on people's doors. Now that I think about back at that, I was, I was probably not very safe for 18 year old girl, girl to be knocking on doors. But I'm like, can I shovel your snow? And I'm like, oh, little girl, you're so cute. And I got, I get $5, $10 to shovel snow for all the people in the neighborhood. And I, I'd be, you know, ready for the store to get all the candies I wanted. Yeah. <laughs> where where was this that you were doing? Uh, this was in Detroit, ones? Michigan, where it's very cold in the wintertime and snow wrecks up real quick. And as um, soon as the snow started falling down, I was knocking on doors and shoveling that snow. So I had, had a hustler spirit way back then. And so it's never left me. Now, instead of shoveling snow, I'm picking up the phone, dialing, calling businesses, calling 
production companies, getting yeah. my name out there, getting new customers. Yeah, I was going to say it had to be somewhere up north uh, to be able to rack up that kind of money, um, you know, in an afternoon. Because uh, I can imagine people in Detroit, uh, yeah, nobody wants to shovel their snow. No. Um, it's funny because I grew up in Kentucky and I could have done the same thing, but I never did that hustling for snow. I don't mm. know. I I guess I just only did it for our house and then playing in the snow and making igloos <laughs> and uh, snowball fights. So and that's I, fun too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I went on the more fun side than, than making money uh, myself. So, mm. um, okay. So when you started the Malden Group, um, you, what was the, the thing that drove you to realize like, Hey, um, I want to do this for myself and start a company. Um, was it, was it purely like leaving, uh, the medical field or, or was there some other thing that kind of caused that, that switch for you to say like, I can do this myself. Yeah. So I hired this guy to do Google ads for me. He came to my kitchen table at my house and he explained this thing called Google to me, Google ads. And he's like, yeah, you, you pay me. Um, 1500 bucks. And then the Google ads will appear when people um, search for your business. And then, you know, you'll get new customers. I said, okay, oh, wow, that sounds like a cool idea. Let me do this thing called Google ads. This is back when Google ads was brand new. And um, I paid them the money and zero ads, zero leads zero customers. I'm like, oh my gosh, I just paid this guy all this money. I, it took me six months to save this money with from my job because I was in a transition in zero. So I think that turned me into the joker or something. I was like, dude, I can't, I can't lose this kind of money. I got to learn how to do this myself. So I, I, I got trained at Google ad certified, analytics certified, and just went at it. And business grew, very successful, new customers. I'm like, this is the future. This is the, this internet thing, this social media thing, this Google ads thing is the future. I need to yeah. dive in deep on this and do it for other people because that's where the money is. And yeah. um, I was good at it and I enjoyed doing it. So here we are. Yeah. So I guess in, in retrospect, it's good that that guy uh, took your 1500 bucks and gave you zero. Uh, because otherwise you might not have been motivated to go figure this all out for yourself. That's exactly it. It gave me the, what I call the Joker moment where I just like <laughs> lost it. Like, okay. <laughs> so when you were starting this, um, was there anything that made you nervous about doing this on your own? Like apprehensive, worried about, you know, not making it work? Like what, what concerned you? Yeah, um, the ebbs and flows of business makes mm -hmm. you nervous because the, the bills are consistent. However, the customer flow was not consistent. So it was right. just like when you're project based and you get paid for uh, a one time fee for a certain set of work. Then you're like, OK, you're chasing after that that next customer in order to, yeah. you know, have the consistent um, cash flow. So yeah. that's the scary part. How did you uh, how did you deal with that? Like, how did you try to solve for that issue? Subscription based business, baby. Yeah. Consistent cash flow every time. You know exactly how much you're going to make every month when you have your people set up on a subscription. Yeah. So you tried to uh, switch over people to a, a subscription based um, offering right early on, or did it take you some time to figure out like? This is a better way to go. Like, what what was the the aha moment there? Early on, because you know, as I mentioned earlier, project based work you're chasing down the next co new customer after the right. project's done. Um, but uh, if I can keep them in my suite of services for a longer period of time with um, yeah. things that they need more consistently, then it's it's something that I can uh, charge on a retainer basis. Yeah. So, so this market generally has not done subscription based, um, services, right? It's all, it has been project based. So how did you position this and sell it to your clients to make them understand that this would be better for them as well as better for you, obviously? Yeah. So simply put, when you do a one and done type of situation with any type of marketing program, it's not going to work long-term. 
So for example, if you get graphic design and get a nice logo and you get a nice email signature and you get a nice brochure, okay, what do you do with the brochure? What do you do with the logo? What do you do to make it work? There's no strategy behind all that. So I wanted to provide my clients with a strategy and a plan and a results-driven um, system that they can use custom-made for their business that uh, allowed that logo, that email signature, that brochure, that website to come to life and actually produce new customers for them. Yeah. Okay. Um, so from here, so you, you ran this for a few years, you're still running it, um, but you decided to add on. What was the what was the thing that caused you to say like, hey, I want to start a production company now, right? Like I've already got this other thing, this marketing company. Mm -hmm. What was the aha moment that caused the, the thought that a production company makes sense? Yeah, so I was working on a book called Work in Progress with um, my daughter's career coach. My daughter was in high school at the time. She was trying mm -hmm. to figure out what to do with her life. I hired this career coach. Career coach gave her this really cool assessment to see what jobs line up with her skills and her aptitude. Mm -hmm. And you know, the assessment spit out all these results. You'll be good as a web designer, graphic designer, interior designer. She picked graphics and, and web design. Now she's in school. She's a sophomore in college for that profession. And it wouldn't, if it weren't for this assessment that Lori gave Victoria, my daughter, I would not have uh, a clue, you know, what we should do with her. And uh, so Lori and I got together, we decided working on a book and the book is called Work in Progress. And I said, I would, I would like to have a TV show around this whole subject because so many kids are, are not happy with, you know, their education. They're not getting a good job after they graduate. Their, their education is obsolete sometimes after they graduate. They're not um, getting set up with uh, foreknowledge about the professions that they're going to school for. Like me, when I went to school for being a doctor, when I really should have been in business. <laughs> right. You know, so my personal experience um, really spearheaded this uh, this initiative with, through this book to have kids know what they're getting into before they jump into a major or, or minor in college. Yeah. And so yeah. I wanted to do a TV show that spanned off from the book that I was doing with Lori. I started pitching the TV show. And, you know, got some, um, as, as we speak now, some, some um, television networks are interested in the concept. I'm, I'm working on some development deals as we speak. And I have a couple of other show ideas that came after I had some success with that first idea with the work in progress uh, book and TV show. Uh -huh. So I was like, oh, I have some other ideas and start, start working on a food concept, an interior design concept, um, a home and garden concept. And so now I have all these concepts that I'm going to be pitching. One of my shows, Work in Progress, the first one is um, a finalist at a, a, a national pitch competition that I'm going to do in June. So all these cool things started happening. And I was totally inspired by like Tyler Perry, what he's done with his business, Oprah Winfrey, the queen of media. Um, also, people like Tyra Banks and what she did with her television show. And uh, just a Shonda Rhimes, a brilliant writer, came up with all these hit shows. I'm like, this is this is where it's at, man. I got to get in the game. <laughs> okay, um, so you're you're pretty new in that business. So so you've got two companies that you're running. Um, you've got family. You've got all these things. How do you deal with juggling kind of all of these things and the stress of running? couple of companies, family life, personal life, like all of those things. How do you handle uh, that stress? I am a stickler for writing things down and having a, a tight schedule and also having uh, a very good team. So if you don't have a good team behind you in your family, a good team behind you in your businesses, then you're not, you're going to fall apart. Everything's going to be terrible for you. So you have to invest in team first, teamwork at home, teamwork work in the business and yeah. um, all of your initiatives. So at home, you know, I wake up at six o'clock in the morning. I, I work out. I have a, a protein smoothie. Um, I go to my office eight to four. I'm working. And then after I come home, 
then I have my dinner, and then I do some yoga or Tai Chi, I read with my son, and then I go to bed. And like, that's my routine every single day on a personal front. And then yeah. on the business front, I have um, a column for the Malden Group Initiatives, A, B, C, D. Um, so-and-so is, um, is dedicated to A, this person dedicated to B, that person dedicated to C, I'm dedicated to D and E. You know, each person has their own line item that they're dedicated to and they do their task and the work is done. Same thing with the secondary business. And so um, just having uh, a, a tight schedule, um, a yeah. list of everything that needs to be done and then delegation for each task is what allows yeah. me to keep it all together. Yeah. Do you, um, so is your work week Monday to Friday or do you also work on the weekends or are the weekends, you know, that's a boundary where you don't cross into? I would say Monday to Saturday okay. is my schedule. Um because Saturday, I just feel like there's just so much to do. I, maybe one day <laughs> I can have Saturday to myself, but for now, I got to hustle on Saturday too. Yeah. Um, you, you mentioned an exercise routine where you're waking up at six and, and exercise. Does that go into Saturday as well? Or is it seven days a week or is it five days a week? Like, you know, how do you fit it all in? 6 a.m. I wake up every single day. Yeah. Even on the weekend. Every single day, se- Sunday included. Okay. Yes. I'm just on a schedule. I'm just, my body just wakes up at that time. Got it. Got it. So seven days a week we're working out. Yep. Oh, wow. Okay. You're way better than I am. I, <laughs> I, I, I don't always, uh, every now and again, I can get to seven days a week, but man, seven days a week consistently is. Well, I'm totally to motivated. I have um, some health uh, things that makes it mandatory that I work out. Yeah. Yeah. And, and probably spending the time, uh, in the hospital that he talked about at the front end probably makes you like a little bit more motivated too. Exactly. Um, how, how do you account for um, like other things around wellness for yourself too, then during the day, like sleep and, um, and, and taking time for yourself? Like, how do you fit that in? And, and maybe it's not just during the day, but like over the year, like taking vacation and things like that. How do you work all of that in? Well, I'm still um, trying to perfect that because I'm um, I'm in hustle mode, still building the business. And when you right. when you're building the business, you have little to no time for yourself. But I try to do a hard stop at seven a.m. or seven p.m. for um, all of, all of my work and emails. And then on Sundays, I I I'm totally offline. I try to not to do anything. And yeah. then vacations, it's only once a year for now. Um, but I'd like to build my way up to four times a year. Yeah. Okay. That's nice. Goals. Oh. Hashtag goals. <laughs> where was, uh, if you don't mind me asking, where was the last vacation you took? Uh, I went to, uh, where did I go? Uh, Panama City Beach. And oh, okay, nice. relaxed on the beach. Mm-hmm. Relaxed on the beach. Hopefully you went there when it wasn't spring break for all the kids so that God, no. it was a little bit more calm. <laughs> yeah. Before, <laughs> I always go in May before spring break hits. Nice. Uh, that, that, that's a good call right there. Um, okay. So let's talk about, so you, you mentioned a little bit about, you know, how you've got these columns and, and, uh, how you kind of organize the business so that you kind of know who's doing what, are there any other technologies or apps or systems that you use to help you manage all of the activities that you're involved with? Yeah. I use HubSpot for my CRM. Every time I meet someone new, boom, in HubSpot. And then I connect with them on LinkedIn, boom, LinkedIn. And then I connect with them on Instagram, boom, Instagram and um, Facebook and all the others. When I meet someone, I, I get them in my um, my sphere of influence through the social channels and through my email newsletter. So they hear from me on a frequent basis after we've connected somehow. And so I've done that over the last um, 10 years. So now I have thousands of people that I've met that I've stayed in touch with virtually and built the relationship virtually with, which is right. really cool because I'll see someone out in the street and it's like, oh, buddy. I'm like, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> I see you on social are, media. And I'm like, oh, OK, yay. Are, are you are you good with names and faces or, or not? Typically, yeah. So I do a name. Um uh, association. So for your name, uh, Sanjay, I think of the sun, the beautiful sun, and a blue jay, a blue jay bird. So when I see you, I think it's beautiful sun and blue jay bird. Sanjay, 
Yep. It's funny that you use that example because a lot of times I will use that exact same example to make sure people know how to pronounce my name. Um, because you know, the A in the front, uh, you know, when you spell it throws people off, you know, they I know, like, understand that's a Sanjay? U. No. Yeah. Yeah. Growing <laughs> up in Kentucky, I I've been called all kinds of things. So, uh, sure. I pretty much respond to whatever, mm-hmm. um, any other like systems that you use? So your big HubSpot user, anything else that you use that man, if you didn't have it, it would be impossible to run these businesses. I would, uh, definitely say Calendly, uh, that ah, Calendly, tool yeah. is like, Watch life changing because yeah. I'm able to, you know, block off the times that I'm available. Boom, boom, boom. Monday, this time, Tuesday, yeah. that time, Wednesday, that time. And then when people see the calendar, they only see the times that are available for me and they book right. the time and it goes automatically to my calendar. I mean, brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Um, okay. So thinking back, you've been, you've been now uh, hustling on this and, and being an entrepreneur for, eight years, right? Um, mm-hmm. Since you started the Malden Group. Uh, think back, like, what is it that you've done in the past that you would, if you could go back in time, that you would do differently? Great question. Hmm, what would I do differently? Not, not the $1,500, because that, that launched you, uh, even though it was a bummer, bummer to lose the money. But, you know, it was an expensive education. <laughs> but there's some other things I lost money on that I think I would have, you know, like to have my time back and my money back on. And yeah. a few things that I wasted money on was uh, PR. Yeah. Like, no. Um, was it magazine. was it that you wasted money on that because it was too early or wasn't the right fit of agency? Like, what was the issue? Not the right fit for agency. Okay. Not the right strategy. Right. Okay. Got it. Uh, number two, um, you know, ma- magazines, print media, like advertising thousand dollars for a one page ad in a book, a yeah. local magazine, a local newspaper. Back in the days, newspapers were a, a thing. <laughs> and, so so uh, you spent money on ads in places like that and didn't convert anybody or zero. You know, yeah. Zero leads. Postcard mailers. Did that a few times, zero. Uh, So, you know, basically the traditional advertising, you know, I hate to just take a giant dump on all of that, but it just didn't work for me. And it's probably because I didn't spend enough money doing it long enough for it to work, which is what you need, more consistency. And frankly, when you're a small business, you don't have that budget to have the consistency you need in order to get results with traditional media. That's why bigger companies typically um, go down that route because they have that budget. But with digital, with the right strategy, you can get results immediately, which is what I like. Yeah. I I, I see that as an issue time and again, where early stage entrepreneurs are trying to act like big companies and do the same kind of marketing that they do. And you just, you you don't have the capacity. You don't have the dollars uh, to do that. Um, and so some of the things that you mentioned, obviously those work, but, uh, other things too, of like cultivating your own customers is obviously helpful. So as you kind of built up the business, um, did you try to like lean into word of mouth? Like, how did you get your customers to talk about you to other customers or potential clients, um, and refer people? Did you do anything or did you just encourage it? Like, or did you do nothing and it just happened? A little bit of all that you just said, but um, it was a concerted effort to get word of mouth going by asking people, clients to refer the business, making joint ventureships and joint collaborations with like-minded businesses, non-competing businesses with the same client base, making those partnerships happen, referring business back and forth was a great grow upward. Also, current clients being incentivized uh, to give us referrals with a nice little discount off of their retainer monthly services. Yeah. And then also, um, you know, people at networking events, for example, would just rant and rave about how great the services are. And then others would tune in and say, oh, really? Were you able to get that kind of result? I want that kind of result. And then they all right. follow suit and, and come follow up yeah. with us for the services as well. So a little bit of all that. 
Yeah. When you, uh, so you implemented something to give a, a discount uh, if somebody referred uh, a new client to you. How did you figure out? So this is one of the challenges I see with a lot of entrepreneurs is they want to do this, but they can't figure out what is the right amount of incentive to give um, and for the right amount of length of time, right? So how did you figure that out? Is it a is it a permanent discount if you get a new client? Is it only for a certain amount of time? And and how did you figure out the percentage or dollar amount to give? I would say the a one time discount would be sufficient. Uh -huh. If you try to give them a discount all all together, you'll lose too much money on that. Um, yep. And just think about your cost per acquisition for your customers. If it costs you fifty dollars to make to get a new customer, five hundred dollars to get a new customer, five thousand dollars to get a new customer. Yeah. What would you feel comfortable paying out of your pocket for a new customer? Whatever that amount is, is the right. appropriate level of discount to give to your client for that new referral. Yeah. So um, I assume then by you saying that you've tracked your, your customer acquisition costs through all of your channels. Um, and so you kind of know your blended cost of your of your customers coming in. Absolutely. Yeah. So th I think that's a that's a. Uh, a little hidden piece of advice that you've given there is that you should absolutely track your customer acquisition costs. Um, is there something that you do to track that or is that within HubSpot or is it some other way that you, you track those costs? Yeah, so each time you get a new client, what you wanna do is ask, how did you find out about us? Uh, put that in the contact form on your website, put that on your social media channels, put that in your, your questionnaires when you're talking to people over the phone. And um, once you have a, a nice database of customers and you run a report, how did you find out about us report? This many came from social media. This many came from word of mouth. This many came from the referral partner. And then whichever ones are at the top, that's the ones you double down on. This many came from Google ads. This one, you know, that's the one you spend the most money on, the most time on are the ones that are getting the, the biggest results. So are, are you taking your cost on a monthly basis for marketing and then looking at the customers you've got that month, month and then attributing that, that customer acquisition cost based on that? Is it like a monthly that you're doing it? Is it a quarterly? Like, how are you, how are you analyzing that? Monthly, quarterly, and yearly. Okay. So you've got a, a customer acquisition cost that's kind of going throughout and you're seeing if you're going up or down or, or whatever based on that. Yeah, and it changes over time. And it changes as you have new things that you're adding to the marketing mix, like speaking engagements, conferences, expos, workshops, lunch and learns. You, as you um, aggregate all this data, you can see what is giving you the best return over time. Yeah, interesting. Um, okay, so uh, I've got two last questions for you. Um, first, if, some, if you were talking to somebody else, one of our listeners, um, that's thinking about taking that leap and turning, you know, starting a side hustle or turning their side hustle into a small business, what piece of advice would you give them? Do not quit your day job. Keep your job, <laughs> pay your bills, have a consistent way to earn a living first, and then start your side hustle. Dedicate a amount of your time, block off amount of your time on your calendar for that business every single week and stick to that schedule. And as the business grows over here and overtakes the job, overtakes the job in amount of money you're making, and you're making more on the side hustle than you are on the job, then you can quit the job. And then yeah. go all in 100% on the side hustle. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I like it. Um, so, okay, the last question for you then is, is there something based on your experience that a, a, a would-be client of yours should do before they hire a, a firm like yours to improve their marketing or, or things that they're doing inside of their business? Like, what's that, what's that one secret thing? Like, they should all know to do this, but they're not doing this. And you're going to tell us what that is right now. Right now, I'm going to tell you. Are you ready? <laughs> of course you are. You just asked me. We're ready. <laughs> Okay, so this is gonna sound so trite, but listen, it's so important. Stop trying to be everything to everyone. Like pick one or two things, maybe three, 
double down on that, get super good at it, and then find one or two customer segments that that service or product is for. for. And so that way you can have a laser focused approach in your marketing towards that customer base. And then you're gonna speak so clearly to them. It's gonna be in their voice. It's gonna handle their objections. It's gonna handle their goals. And they're gonna be all over that product or service of yours because you are focused directly on them. But if you try to go too far and too wide with too many things, then your, your marketing isn't laser focused. You're kind of all over the place and then you yeah. lose your message. Yeah, that's great advice. Um, this has been great. Uh, Bonnie, where can our listeners find and connect with you online? You can connect with me at bonniemalden.com. Okay, there you go. That's the best place to go then for connecting with Bonnie. So thanks so much for coming on, on, on the show with us. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Side Hustle to Small Business Podcast, powered by Hiscox. To learn more about how Hiscox can help protect your small business through intelligent insurance solutions, visit hiscox.com. That's H-I-S-C-O-X.com. And if you have a story you want to hear on this podcast, please visit hiscox.com slash share your story. I'm your host, Sanjay Park. You can find me on Twitter at, at Sanjay, that's S-A-N-J-A-Y, or on my website at sanjayparek.com.